As with IPv4, you will want to control the traffic that is flowing in and out of your organization. However, it's much more important with IPv6. With IPv6, every device is using a global unicast IPv6 address, one that is visible and routable out on the internet. So we definitely have to make sure we're protecting and controlling the traffic that is flowing in and out of the organization. And you might be saying, hey, I'm not going to do this on my router. I'm going to do it on my adaptive security appliance, the big bad beast that I have set up in the, at the edge of the network to, to filter all that, my firewall. But what about the branch office that you might not have the budget for an adaptive security appliance? You might have to implement an access control list on the interface that is connecting you up to the ISP on that integrated services router. As a result, you are filtering the traffic coming and going from that branch site. And that's the example we're looking at here. We are trying to control the traffic that is flowing into a particular router interface from the internet service provider. So this is the traffic flow we're looking at right here. So as a result, in this case, we have down below interface ethernet zero slash zero, which is this interface right here on the router. And with interface zero slash zero, what we're trying to accomplish is packet filtering. And we are going to be applying to this interface the traffic filter called web traffic. So remember with IPv4, it's IPv4 access group. You specify the access control list name or number, and then you say in or out. Well, in this case, with IPv6, it's IPv6 traffic filter. That's what it is. Specify the name of the IPv6 access list and then in or out. And it's important to realize that with IPv6, it's only named. It's all you have. It's named, extended, access control list. That's your only option. So if we look up top, we can see the IPv6 access list called web traffic. And what is it doing? Well, first and foremost, it's permitting TCP-related traffic from any source to any destination equal to port 80 but only if it's an established session, meaning that the traffic originally generated from a client inside of our network connecting to the web server and the traffic coming back in is a response to the request from the client for the web page from the server as an example. Same thing with permit TCP any, any equal to 443. Again, it's established for that HTTPS traffic. So therefore, some device out on the internet trying to enter into our organization using port 80 or port 443 will be unsuccessful because it's not established at that, at that point in time. There is no established connection for that. It's just somebody trying to break in using those particular ports. DNS is also very important. DNS is going to be used for name resolution. So if you want to go to www.cisco.com, you're going to send out that DNS request. And then in response from that DNS server, you'll receive that reply. We need to make sure that we're allowing those DNS requests out and in uh, that particular interface. So in this case, those top three options are essentially handling that web traffic, whether it's secure web traffic or not secure web traffic, and the DNS requests that have to be looked up. So we're pretty much covered in this case for our users actually accessing websites. Down at the bottom, you can see this permit ICMP any any packet too big. Not something we came across so very often with IPv4. Uh, and, and here's the reason why. With IPv4, we, we're dealing with fragmentation at the hops along the way. So if the packet was too big, we could perform fragmentation at any point in time along that transmission path. Well, with IPv6, we now perform fragmentation at the source. So this MTU discovery process that we had with IPv4 that was at the routers and we performed fragmentation is now moved to those IPv6 hosts. This saves us uh, router processing power. So the router does not have to process all of these packets to say, oh, look at that, too big, let's fragment it at this particular point in time. 
Uh, so now our routers route more efficiently. They work more efficiently. Packets come in. Packets go out. However, we have to realize that the traffic will be denied if the packet is too big because of the implicit denial rule that we have at the very end. So in order to make sure that the packets aren't dropped or blocked because of that implicit denial rule, we're going to have to allow these packets that are too big through the router using the permit ICMP any any packet too big option. So it's just a, a general rule of thumb. That's really what it is, that when you're creating an access control list for traffic filtering in and out of a router interface, you might want to permit those ICMP any any uh, packets that are too big and allow them through the router or else you might have experienced drop packets along the way. How many of you are accustomed to typing in this at the very end of your access control lists? Deny IPv6 any any log. Why might you be doing this? By default, there is an implicit deny any rule at the very end of an access control list as we see down here. Deny IPv6 any any. That's an implicit deny all rule. However, there's no logging done on that implicit deny all. You can't see it. A lot of times we implement the deny IPv6 any any log command, making that implicit deny rule now an explicit deny rule so that way there we can see the packets that are hitting the deny statement right at the very end. So if there's all of a sudden a lot of packets that are being denied, we might want to investigate why that is so. However, you need to be very careful with this for IPv6. With IPv6, we also have two implicit permit rules. That's right, implicit permit rules for ICMP. Specifically, it's for the neighbor discovery process, the neighbor advertisements and the neighbor solicitation messages that are utilized by our clients in order to figure out the MAC address of a known IPv6 address. So, so very similar to the ART process that we're familiar with for IPv4. However, unlike the ART process for IPv4, since this neighbor discovery process relies on ICMP, when you deny IPv6 any, any explicitly, then you are denying these permits as well because they're implicit rules. Any rule you manually configure is above these implicit rules. So deny IPv6 any, any log will now prevent users from being able to determine the uh, MAC address of the particular router interface. So if you're implementing an IPv6 address access list on an internal interface in your organization and that particular interface is going to be um, uh, or the neighbor discovery process is going to be needed to figure out the MAC address of that internal interface, you got to be careful here. You're going to have to add back in these permit statements up here. So you'll have to add back and permit ICMP any any neighbor discovery NA, permit ICMP any any neighbor discovery NS in order to make sure that they are then explicitly permitted or for example a routing protocol that is trying to get the next top IP address of the router's interface it's not going to be returned to that particular router and they won't be able to forward your IPv6 traffic. So keep that in mind.